welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, I wanted to bring you along for anybody who might have questions as to how to ferment chicken feed. I showed you just now how I feed them. I, I literally just dump most of it on the floor, on the ground, and then they just, they just enjoy hunting and pecking, and throughout the day, they just eat it all. I do put about a third of the feed in the typical rubber, uh, open bowls in the chicken coop. I haven't found that to be a problem uh, with the I ha had a problem when I had the meat birds fed that way They would just get in it and they'd poop it in it was nasty uh, These ones sometimes they'll get in it, but it hasn't been an issue They don't really seem to poop in it a whole lot But there's just a, a smaller group of chickens that are just they constantly stay in the coop. They're terrified They won't come outside. I gotta feed them So I don't want to feed them on the the floor of the coop because that's gross so that's just kind of what I've come up with. It seems to be working for this amount of time, but most of the most of the feed I feed on the floor out here. Okay. So it's been a while, I think, since I've actually kind of updated you on my chickens. And what I ended up doing is, if you remember, I had the one batch, it was isobrowns, barred rocks, gold lace wine dots, and black astrolorbs. And those are my original kind of crew. And then I also a bunch of meat birds when the meat birds got wiped out. And then all I had were the egg layers. And then I went on a chicken buying escapade and bought every chicken known to mankind. And so I have a whole bunch of different kinds of chickens. So the older crew was bullying the younger crew. So my son and I came out and we just switched them all around like in the middle of the night and we put all the big ones out here in the tractors, in two tractors, and then put all the little ones up there together. And it's been, seems to be a pretty good arrangement. And so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you kind of how I feed the fermented feed in the tractors. I found this to just be the simplest and the easiest way to do it. And it just works out well for me. It's a little bit more complicated now that I have an egg, egg uh, a nesting box in there. I have to actually open it up and do all those sorts of things in the past I didn't have to. So if you don't have egg layers, you don't have to open up the cage very often to do it this way. Get out. Oh, you guys are just terrible birds. in there. So, I wanted to kind of show you guys something that we have been dealing with. And these gold lace or red wine dots, we have already found two of them pecked to death. And I just came across the last one and they were in the process of pecking her. Thank God I found her in time. But do you guys have issues with this? It's just the gold lace wine dots. And it's just the iso browns who peck on them. And you can see her, I don't know if you can see. There we go. But thank God I found her alive. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this feeding on hold and I'm gonna go tend to this lovely little lady and put some blue coat on her and put her in chicken jail. Uh, not chicken jail, but the chicken hospital. So, well actually, that's probably a pretty good thing that I can show you what I'm doing here. Oh, I need to get that one caged up, don't I? There we go, got her all caught. Okay, so in the past, the other two, we did not find her in time. And she got literally pecked to death. Like her whole hind leg section was gone. I don't know what it is about the gold lace wine dots, but I really hope I can save her. Got her eyes closed. You poor thing. So I don't know if you can kind of see, but like they pecked through her very skin. Like you can see like the meat underneath there. Those iso browns, I tell you, they are terrible birds. So I'm just gonna rinse this off real quick and then we'll take her inside, dry her off. Oh, that is terrible. Okay, so she's still alive. She's still blinking, she's still breathing, her heart's still going, not as quick as it was when I first picked her up. Thank God. But, so now I just, all I do is just rinse her booty off with a hose, just to get it dry. And then I'm just gonna kinda dry it a little bit. I don't know if I'm supposed to dry it. I'm still new to this. 
I've never actually found one that was in this bad a condition. Oh, <laughs> she's struggling. Okay, so let's go get the blue coat on her. So basically, um, chicken jail or the chicken hospital is just in this big brooder that we have. And it's just all ready to go. It's got some nice fresh bedding. All we have to do is put water and feed in there and the chicken and we're good to go. So you just have this stuff, it's blue coat. So you just put it on there. Oh, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Probably tingles a bit, I would imagine. See, it coats it, it's blue. <coughs> ah, it's blue. It's a germicidal, fungicidal. It's like a, sort of like an antibiotic, I think, but it's for uh, birds. Well, for chicken, for bird animals in general. And this chicken's very docile, obviously. It just got pecked almost to death. If I hadn't walked up on her, she probably would have been dead in about 10 minutes. They were actively pecking on her. Um, thank God I came out a little bit earlier than normal. But, uh, so anyways, it coats it with a blue color because chickens will peck on red. That's why, like, once they actually start to peck them and if they draw blood, like, they're almost guaranteed to kill them because they just keep pecking, pecking, pecking at the red. So... Uh, it coats it blue because it hides all the red. So this gal is going to be put in here. Which is the best chance that she has of actually surviving. Whoa, she can't even stand up. Poor thing. Okay, so I'm going to get her a little bit of feed and a little bit of water. And then we're going to go feed the rest of the freaking terrible, terrible cannibalistic chickens and we'll go from there. Okay, so for the ones that are in the tractor, all I do, because I move it every day, right? So I figured out the best way to feed them is to just pour it on the ground where I'm about to move the tractor to, and then I just lift it up and over. And it's worked pretty well for me since, shucks, I've been doing this since, I want to say April. It's worked out really well. So that's all there is to actually feeding the way that I feed chickens with fermented feed. Uh, two different ways, uh, one in the coop and one in the chicken tractor. I'm sure there's tons of other ways you can do it. You might even be able to figure out how to feed it in a feeder. I couldn't figure out how to do that. It would just pool up with water. The chickens wouldn't eat it. It wouldn't drop down to the bottom. So I've found just the simplest way is the best way and that's just feeding them on the ground the way that chickens are meant to feed. Like chickens in the wild, if there are chickens in the wild jungle fowl uh, they just feed on the ground anyways so why wouldn't these and that and they're that actually encourages them to do more of a tilling job so that's why I do that but anyway so I'll bring you back and we'll check on the chicken in just a little bit but all the rest of these are exactly the same so I'm not gonna bore you showing you another one so just like that it's tonight and we're gonna go and check on this little chicken that we got in the shed not gonna lie I'm really nervous I really hope she's still alive What do we got? <gasps> She's alive! I don't know if you can see her eyes open, but she's alive. She's been moving around. She got some stuff in her feed. She got some stuff in her water. So I'm just going to clean that out real quick. And then I will show you how I ferment feed. Okay, so currently I am fermenting for four different batches of birds. And I have three different kinds of feed. I have, this one is for the big enclosure, the chicken run that has the majority of my chickens in it. And I feed them the grower by scratch and peck. And then I also have 
these two which belong to the egg layers out in the chicken tractors and these get just layer feed by scratching tech there's two different tractors of them them and then the last one is just one tractor of meat birds that i have left over they are the red rangers which have taken the longest to actually grow out red rangers plus one cornish cross that we're saving Basically, the way that I like to do this, it's ideal to do it right away. It would have been ideal to do it in the morning because then I guess the full three days of fermenting. But I haven't really noticed a huge difference. As long as it gets like two days, it's pretty good. And the difference that I notice with it is, is that when after they eat it and it goes out the other side, it is completely broken down. You can't see any food particles in it. And if I don't ferment it, then I can totally see like little pieces of grain and it smells so much worse when you don't ferment it. So this helps with them both to digest it and to also just make it not so funky. All right, so we got this big bucket and the rate that I feed it is that meat birds get, uh, what was it? Meat birds get I think about a half a pound per bird. Anyways, it's a cup per bird of feed. And then egg layers get a half of a cup or a quarter to a third, or I should rephrase that. The growers, they get a quarter of a pound per bird, and that's roughly a half of a cup. And then the layers get a third of a pound uh, per bird. And it's a little more than a half of a cup. I just measured it out and I weighed it because I'm not gonna weigh this every single day. So I just know based on the scoop, eight cups right here. And I just kind of go with that. So these guys here, well, this is for the layers. So, and I also have these numbered. <clears throat> That's one thing that I found. I think it was a homesteading family. I kind of use their tip a little bit. Uh, and, but I mean, I do it on a, on a much different scale, but th this tip came from them, so I'll give them credit. And basically I just number them. I have one, two, three, and four. So I have, and I have, three of each of the buckets. Like you can see on here, as uh, this is bucket four. So this is, I know that this is the meat birds out there and this is day number three. Same thing here, three, three, and then two, three, and then these aren't marked, but one, three. And so that way I know which one goes to where and which day. So I know that today is just day three and it just kind of helps me keep track because I have so many different ones to feed and I want to make sure that one doesn't over ferment and then I grab one that's not fermented well enough and if I forget the rotation or if I move them, you know, things like that, then it just helps me be able to keep track of them and understand what's going on. So, get a layer feed. And there are, currently there's 10 and 11. And so technically one scoop is enough, technically. I give them one. I do, you know, maybe like one and a half scoops or one and sometimes two scoops. I just like to make sure because they were in that big enclosure and I kind of feel bad for putting them in the chicken tractor. So maybe I'm just trying to make them not be so mad at me by feeding them. Thank you. Happy when I bring food. Okay, and so the meat birds, I feed the meat birds currently. I feed them just the chick starters. And I like to feed my birds without any, uh, definitely no corn, but I like to feed them without soy. Pardon, other way around. Definitely no soy. I like to feed them without corn. Uh, they have had some corn through their through the life, but overall, the chick starter that I buy doesn't have any corn in it and the gro the, uh, the broiler feed mix that I was using for know, a week or two had some corn in it and then I realized they had corn in it and I realized I could just keep doing the start the chick starter so I went back to that it's a little more expensive but I think it's worth it in the long run and it also doesn't let them grow out quite as quick because the corn is like a quick growing thing that's why they put it in there so I put three scoops in there And again, that's, these ones are a third of a cup per bird. And this one is a cup per bird. And then this one is gonna be a quarter of a cup per bird. And I'm gonna be real with you. The ones that are in the enclosure, 
I don't know the true number. Got a lot. So I just kind of guesstimated. I have a calendar of <clears throat> uh, who I bought when, and I kind of tried to add it up and stuff like that. And there was a, a bird or two that died along the way. So I might be overestimating a little bit, but I just do five scoops in there. And uh, they all seem to be satiated after the initial morning rush of eating. There is a good amount left over for them to kind of snack and munch on throughout the day. So I kind of figured that's a good amount. There's never any left over the next day. So I know I'm not overfeeding them. And, uh, you know, beyond just being a normal chicken wanting to eat all the time, they don't seem to be ravenously hungry. They're not attacking one another or anything like that. So I, I know that they're doing okay with that. I have a spatula. It's a silicone spatula with a wooden handle. It's just a strong, good spoon that will get into all the corners and the crevices. So I use this and this is what I've used from the start. Same spoon, haven't rinsed it. Well, I've rinsed it. I haven't washed it. I figure it's kind of like along the lines of like a meat stick, you know? And so that's just what I use. But I just want to make sure it needs to get into all the crevices and the corners to scrape it out every day. So I can't use just a straight wooden spoon. So this is what I came up with. Oh, let me show you in, inside here. You can see it's kind of filled up about halfway up the bucket. And I'm just going to cover it by at least double. So basically what I do is I just kind of fill it up to about three quarters or so of the way of what I would fill it up with. And then I kind of just start to stir it around. I found if I try and dig it around and try and stir it up when it's not full enough, like it just doesn't do a good job because you can't, there's not enough movement. It's hard to explain. Okay, so right here is where I keep my tower of fermenting feed. And you can see I just had, there's two here. And then oftentimes, okay, let's be real. Oftentimes, okay, realistically, I should pull these aside and stack the two on top of it to put the other one on the bottom. But really what I end up doing is I either do two days at a time. So there's just one bucket here on the ground, or I just kind of line them up, right? You're on sitting on top of a bay of freezers right here. So oftentimes I'll just line it up here. And then when I get, cause it's, it's just heavy and I'm lazy. Um, but I, it's just heavy. I'm not lazy, but like I got stuff to do. Okay. So I have all the buckets stacked. I have all the buckets stacked up over here. I'm going to show you the proper way that I do this. I uh, just to make it easy. And if you only have one bucket or one batch of chickens that you are feeding, it's not a big deal. Like it, it, all of this doesn't matter. This is kind of just how I figured out how to do it since I have so many different sets of birds. Um, or if you have a lot of more birds than I have in the same container. Um, I think one thing that I forgot to mention when you're actually filling these up, let me see if I can get it to come through on camera. Uh, so you can kind of see like the feed line is about here. The rest of it is water. You want to cover it by about twice as much water and if you're able to see through it, great. If you're not able to see through your bucket and to see once it settles, you'll be able to see a really a pretty stark line right here. And um, so you just want to fill it up to twice as much because it's going to expand. You can see this one. I don't know if you can see this one, but you can see this one. You know, it was down here. You know, it was half and half and it, the feed kind of grew. And you want to make sure that the feed has enough water in there to stay underneath and submerged in the water. Otherwise it can run the risk of molding. So you want to make sure that you're filling it up enough. And sometimes you'll have too much water in there, but I mean, you just water your grass or, you know, your chicken run or whatever it may be. Sometimes you could even, if you really wanted to, you might even be able to pour off the brine into like a bowl or something like that. And they'll eat it. I've tried it or drink it. You know what I'm saying? They like it. They really do. Uh, they might not enjoy it like the first day that you give it to them, but after a while, they will prefer it. My The bird that's in there, she hasn't touched any of the food that's in there. And she'll probably eat quite a bit once I actually put in a bowl of her fermented feed. She'll really enjoy it. And I'll show you that just so you can see. But I don't know. She's just running away from me. She's really skittish and shy uh, for obvious reasons. I mean, she almost died this morning, so I can understand why she'd be a little bit wary. Okay, so this is number two, so we're going to put it on the bottom of number two. Okay. 
this whole process was much easier when they were littler and didn't eat nearly as much food. So, yeah. But as they've grown, these buckets have gotten a lot heavier. But it's nothing too bad. I mean, I put my put myself through this. I'm the one who bought all the chickens, right? I just want you guys not happening. I just wonder if just maybe they look too hard. Oh. I think that this girl has had enough trauma to last an entire lifetime and I'm just gonna leave her be. She has her feed, she has her water, she's got everything that she needs and she's got peace and quiet and she's away from the other birds who are torturing her. Uh, maybe at some point if I feel comfortable enough with it I might find a, a cellmate for her because I think she's probably gonna be in here for a while. So this is my first time really dealing with this sort of thing with the chicken. I have had a couple of birds who just had all their tail feathers pecked off and had some blood, but it was in the big open pen and they weren't being like viciously attacked and they didn't have open, open skin. You couldn't see the meat underneath. It wasn't anywhere near as bad as this poor little girl, girl over here. So if you guys have any feedback, any tips, any tricks, anything that I'm doing wrong, anything that any, just anything. I would really love it if any of you more experienced chicken owners out there would like to give me some feedback of ways that I can help this poor little girl here recover as quickly as possible. Please leave it in the comment section below. I am filming this and it's going to be posting tomorrow. So any tips that you have for me will be much appreciated and actively needed. So back to the original purpose of this video, and that was fermenting feed. I definitely recommend fermenting feed. If you have the option of getting organic feed and whole grain feed, totally go for it. I think it is wonderful. I think it's worth the extra cost. It's just kind of full circle. You are what your animal, you are what your food eats basically, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. So a couple of things to kind of note, I believe that you can use pelleted. I've heard both ways, but a lot of people say it kind of just turns into mush, but after a couple of days, your birds should get used to it from what I hear. I've never tried it, but if you want to try it and let me know later, that would be awesome. Or if you know, and you do that, let me know down below as well. I'm trying to think of anything else that anybody who's never really fermented might want to know. You don't need to use any kind of a starter at all. I definitely, plan to get some larger, like some glass barrels and things like that and use and start fermenting those in glass. As of yet, I don't because I'm fermenting it on such a large scale. I just haven't done it yet. The plastic seems to work. They are technically food safe and BPA free and all that kind of stuff. As of just yet, they're fermented in plastic. It is, let me see what else. So yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it. When you are using the fermenting fe fermented feed, it takes some to some toying with and some some playing with in the beginning. Everybody says that you can get by with less feed than what is supposed to be, but I haven't found that to be accurate. It could be when they're in the larger run and maybe if they have more room, but in the tractors, definitely not. They I give them more feed than what it, what it says on the scratch and peck website. Um, so I don't know if I'm doing anything wrong with that or what's going on with that, or if they're just ravenous jerkish birds. I don't know what's going on with that. I know the ice and browns are. Don't get ice and browns, they suck, they're mean. If you have anything to add to the conversation, or if you have any ways that I can help keep my little bird lady alive, please let me down, know down below. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Bye.